Hola, me llamo Jaime Ceballos and you are watching The Red Booth. Hi, welcome to The Red Booth Show. I'm Kimberly. On tonight's episode, I have actor Jaime Ceballos. You may recognize him from Animal Kingdom, American Horror Story, or The Bridge. And he also has some new movies coming out, which we talk about on the show. So come and join us. So, hey, Jaime, how are you doing? Pretty good. It's a Saturday. I'm happy. <laughs> That's not, good. I'm not working. It's a good one. It's a good yeah. weekend. Thanks for being here on the Thank show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's exciting. I've actually seen uh, the show Animal Kingdom, which is pretty intense, I have to say. Yeah, it's a lot of fighting going on. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of, like craziness and you're um you kind of play the villain i guess yeah i started out um it's a recurring guest star role and yeah there's a lot of fighting yeah <laughs> it's the nerve the pinch <laughs> the pinch nerve yeah yeah he was telling me he has a pinch nerve apparently so i do it's pretty bad yeah, that sucks. <laughs> i actually can't move this is how he's this, he's like this, this is just how show. i stay <laughs> and he still came and did the show yeah. anyway so thanks for being here <laughs> with a pinch nerve and all yeah <laughs> It was all that fighting on the show. It was, yes. Well, you should see the other guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you play this role. Why don't you tell us a bit about it? Because this is a pretty intense show. It's actually really, really well done. Yeah, I'm playing Scotty Randall on the show. And uh, um, yeah, just, just this bad guy. I guess it's, it's hard as an actor just to say that's a bad person because no one thinks they're a bad person. Right. So you kind of have to justify, I guess, looking through their... They're Why not, they're behaving that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, kind of like from the underground world of sort of things, you know. Yeah. But I play a lot of those because of my tattoos. Because of your many <laughs> tattoos. That's right. We were talking about this. Now, you said you had like 35 tattoos or something, right? Um, 30. Oh, 30. 30, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I have less now. I, t I took some off. Really? Yeah. Did it, was it successful with the removal? You know, um, which is really funny, I got a chance to do a movie called Duke. Okay. It's coming out uh, in 2017, and I gained like 45 pounds for this role. What? Of what? And Fat I, or muscle? Both. Okay. <laughs> both. I, ice cream and weights. Nice. And so... You were just like in the gym like... Rawr, yeah, rawr. pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. And I shaved my hair for it, and it was really great. I got a chance to work with Richard Cabral, who was uh, just nominated for an Emmy last year year I'm um for American Crime. Wow. And he comes from LA. He's like from this world. And I got to play this C character and so I shaved my hair and the director was like, you gotta really commit to this role because I'm nothing like this. So I went to Homeboy Industries and I got to work with these guys and just was asking them about this life. Cause I grew up in New York, you know, I know nothing about like gang culture out here in LA. And so as a I guess as a nice gesture, they said, do you want to get some tattoos removed? Oh, wow. And I said, yes, I'd love to do that. And now, why would they want to get your tattoos removed? Because uh, Homeboy Industries is an organization where they get people out of jails and gangs and they get them jobs, right? Oh, okay. That's really awesome. I think their slogan is, nothing stops a bullet faster than a job. <laughs> so that's their thing and I think it's great that's fantastic yeah so they were like talking to me and they were like were you ever in a gang and stuff like that and I was like no <laughs> I wanted to say yes because I felt like I have all these tattoos and so they provided me a free service because I worked with one of these kids and they started taking some off and it hurt so much and did it hurt more than getting a tattoo in the first place Yes, like 80 times more. What? I started, like, you literally cry from the, like, just burning the skin. And then I, yeah. I couldn't go through with it. And I said, enough. Never mind. Yeah. So which one were you trying to, like, remove? So there was a big thing here in, the, like, uh, in the middle of these two tattoos. Okay. And they just faded away. Wow, I can't really see it anymore. Yeah. Right there. And I just did one huge session. And after that, I said, I'll just keep them on. Because... <laughs> It's too painful. Yeah, I'm, I'm a weird actor because I get a lot of those roles and I do because a lot of... Because of your tattoos. Yeah, because I get a lot of... Uh, I do a lot of commercials too, playing like corporate guys. I just did one um, for United Healthcare. And, but then you'd have to have your arms like fully they, covered, They just right? never know. They ah, never know because I go into the audition in with long sleeves. Yeah. yeah. And so I've booked a handful of commercials where the ad agencies had freaked out because I'm supposed to wear short sleeves. And then they can't fire you, so they just airbrush them now. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, that works. That's not that hard. It works. Yeah. <laughs> so I've had the privilege of playing. It. No, I'm not. I wouldn't say character actor. I normally play like a bad guy or the cop detective. Yeah. But I've been able to, I guess, because I have tattoos, play like this whole LA subculture scene that I know nothing about. I'm just faking my way through it. <laughs> well, that's what acting is. Yeah. So you're doing a great job. And you've landed a pretty awesome role for it, too. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. On that note, we have to take a quick break, but we will be right back with The Red Booth Show. I really wanted to put a deck on my house. The floor was creaking and there were cracks in the wall. I had them put in walls in my basement. Well, the whole thing was done on time, on budget, and not a day of work was missed. Alpha Structural is a top-rate company. I'd recommend them to anybody. If you live in a hillside home and gravity is pulling you towards the edge of the cliff, I recommend you call Alpha. It was a real pleasure to work with Alpha. Welcome back to the Red Booth Show. We're here with Jaime Ceballos. How's it going, Jaime? Great. Thank you for the per perfect pronunciation. Uh, de nada? De nada. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yo hablo un poquito español. Yo también un poquito. Oh. <laughs> no, no, sí hablo, sí hablo español. Yeah, sí hablo. That was even said that, you yeah. even said that with an, ang an American accent. Thank you. I could yeah. tell that, that it wasn't Z real. Yeah, I usually get Zavalas. Like Zavalas. Tali Zavalas, and people ask me if I'm Greek all the time. Really? Mm -hmm. That's so weird. Yeah. I guess is that like kind of like a similar spelling? It's not though, really, is it? I think, no, I think it's not the same, but I get that all the time. They go, are you related to Telly Savalas? And, and uh, <laughs> You're like, you know, no. <laughs> I think it's because, you know, I'm tall. Mm -hmm. I'm over six feet tall. And so... I noticed that. You're super tall. Yeah, I'm... I think six two something. It changes on the on the day. But is it harder to get roles because you're tall? Yes, yes. Because you're tall Latino. That's the main thing. So do you have like a specialty agent because of that? Like because your tattoos. <laughs> I'm saying like there's there's agencies no. with people with tattoos and like characters. No, I think I have just a regular agent and manager because yeah. I do a lot of theater out here. Oh, cool. And it's interesting. I've been able to kind of just go into like this character actor place and also yeah. just playing these like hard edge detectives and gang bangers, which I'm really lucky because I know some actors in this town are just like, they're given this one thing, you know, and yeah. then they can just do that. But you can do different roles, yeah. I think so, yeah, I think that's what acting's about. That's you know? great. And so you gotta I've mix been it up. able to, yeah, I just played, it was really cool. Um, I was very, very lucky. I got a chance to play Edgar Allan Poe in a movie that, I just came out. I just came out right now. Like a okay, few I weeks love ago. Edgar Allan Poe. Me too. It's called The Ghost and the Whale. It was one of these movies that it had a nice budget. It was with Jonathan Price from Pirates of the Caribbean. A great, great ensemble. Uh, Tippi Hedren was in it from The Birds. Oh wow! And the movie was a tribute to The Birds. Actually, really, we shot up in Bodega Bay, and so I was very fortunate to do this film. But it, you know, it's like these movies. If it's not like these studio. Uh, Marvel movies, I think a lot of movies get like, just lost these days, you know? Yeah. Well, there's still a good, you know, indie scene, I think, especially yeah. here with the festivals and mm -hmm. different things like that. And plus, people can find you online, like on Netflix or Hulu yeah, or yeah. Amazon. And yeah, It's kind of kinda cool, right? I think people can yeah. watch things a lot yeah, more Yeah, and it's, it's great because I got to play this guy who thinks he's Edgar Allan Poe, and that was a really tough audition. So for the audition, I didn't do the... the uh, the scenes. I just went in and did a, uh, a poem. Of Edgar Allan Poe's? Did yeah. you do The Raven? I did. You did? I did The Raven, yeah. And that's all I did. And that's... I left. And I got the role. And I was very uh, fortunate. Did you do it with without the... Like, did you memorize The Raven and say it all? I didn't. I just read it. Okay. As this guy, as this character who thinks who he's thinks... Edgar Allan Poe. Crazy. So it was great. For that, I got a chance to like drop like 20 pounds and... You know, I had this mustache and crazy hair, and yeah, it was fun. That's awesome. Yeah. You have had to change your weight a lot. You had to get it was just last gain year. Gain yeah. a bunch of weight for one role, and you mm -hmm. had to lose a bunch of weight. And then on um, on Animal Kingdom, like, did you have to do any no, special no, prep? No, no, no. I'm just my my you're just your, my, your myself. Self. Yeah, but, but you had to shave your head, right? No, for the no, just cut it shorter. But no, yeah. I shaved my hair for a. That's a very interesting role for um, a new show. It's for a pilot called Home, a new Jerry Bruckheimer project. That's exciting. Yeah, and they shaved my hair, 
they that was like the I think that was the the deal. If I didn't shave my hair, I wouldn't get the role. Well, they want what they want, and I guess. So I got to live in Vancouver for a while, and they they kept putting these tattoos in my face and stuff like that, and it just fake did, tattoos. Yeah, it just didn't work. And I played this guy who was uh, who was um, basically. Well, I'm not probably allowed to say what it's about because I signed the contract saying oh, what it's man. not about. But well, we just know that but, well, Jerry Bruckheimer made it, so yeah. it's probably pretty cool. Yeah, Brett Anderson directed, who did the the movie where Christian Bale lost a lot of weight. I think oh, the, the Machinist. Machi yeah, that amazing one. movie. Great. Yeah, and such a great director to uh, to work with. He's so. directing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was a really uh, cool opportunity and to just hang around Canada and. That's you know. got to be awesome. I can only imagine. Well, you can't really tell us about the role, but you can tell us when it's coming out? Uh, it's a show for TNT, so I don't know I don't know okay. much more other than they made me sign contracts. I was in Canada. and Hopefully we'll see it on TNT. Yeah. It, it was really interesting because the role demanded a lot. You yeah. know, um, there was some form of, I guess, a mental patient. So, you know, researching these things and just having fun and you know I'm yeah. a very light guy too but I play a lot of it you know with film is very physical so you're gonna get these roles based on your appearance a lot right that's really interesting yeah. but you're able to obviously play all of these different roles and you mm. know that's what it, that's what it's all about so yeah yeah I did a sitcom too which I'm very proud of yeah that's cool well let's uh, take a quick break and you can tell me about that when we come back to the Red Booth Show. We're here with actor Jaime Ceballos. How's it going, Jaime? Really good. Really cool. good. Well, you were just telling me a little bit about your new sitcom as well. Oh, that, yeah, that's actually, um, well, it's two, It's a two-fold thing. So I realized how much I love comedy because I always, I'm a light guy, you know? I still yeah. watch, like, Friends on Netflix. You know? <laughs> All my friends are like, have you seen this show? Have you seen this new thing? And I'm like, I'm like a movie guy, but I'll, I'll watch some new shows, you know, because yeah. you audition for them. You right. gotta learn the tone. But I find myself watching like, I Love Lucy, um, you know, Friends, Everybody Loves Raymond. I'm still stuck in the 90s somewhere, I guess, right? <laughs> and so I was very, I had the honor of booking this pilot um, called Basketball Wife, and that was from the creators of Martin. And I played a TV cop. I played an actor who's an actor in the show. You know? It's like Inception. It was no, just very, too it, many layers. Okay, now Basketball Wife isn't that like it's a reality show? Right. So originally it was called. Um, it had another title, but then they renamed it to Basketball Wife. So it's been in like this limbo thing where it hasn't come out yet. But pretty much the whole cast from Martin's in is in it, except okay. for Martin. But it's from the <laughs> but writers. But he's like producing it or something. It's or from the executive involved? producers of the oh, show, okay. Martin. And I realized how much I enjoy doing comedy. So I took a crack at it, and I wrote my first play. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, it was called Stuck Together. Is this the one that you sold recently? Well, yeah. it's. Uh, I wrote this play the, over the course of two years. My wife's Arabic. She's also an actress. And that's so I, cool. Uh, yeah, I wanted to kind of like, because I'm Latino, you know, and, and I'm South American, and, and I know her family. I was like, wow, we have so much similarities, you know, like, but we're just seen so different in media sometimes. Right. And so I really was fascinated with that culture. And I said, I'd like to see that on a sitcom or, or you know, because I think people generally just want to have a good time. You know, I, you know, aside That's true. from the politics and media and this, people are just people, right? Yeah. So I wrote this play called Andalusia and then I changed it to Stuck Together. And we had a stage reading in Sherman Oaks uh, at the White Fire Theater and it got optioned as a TV show by 
Barney Cohen, who created uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Very cool. And we just shot a small sizzle, and there was uh, supervising producers Jeff Melman, who's a, a veteran TV director, and his son Luke Melman uh, directed it, and it was just just a blast so they're shopping it around town that's great we had our first meeting at warner brothers the other day wow congratulations Thank you. that's really exciting so it you're not just an actor you're a writer yeah yeah i'm an actor writer director and and i i found it really fascinating kind of just going through the warner brothers gates not as an actor yeah it was like almost there was more pressure <laughs> you know in a room full of suits to pitch something that had been my my i wrote this on sundays like on my spare time just to have fun with it yeah well, it probably is like also a lot more personal to you, so it will like mean more to you, kind of, you know. Yeah, it is. It is. So I, I really, uh, I'm on a comedy tear. I really would like to explore that side of being light, you know, having played all these like yeah. tough, you know, That's where you right. have to go there and you know, you laughing. Played, you yeah, know. you played a lot of roles like that, even as well. Like you were saying, um, what was what was the other sort of a dark show, the TV show that you were on? Um, I've done, I've done a, a handful of shows. Uh, I was a recurring on a show called The Bridge. That was just heavy, heavy. It was on FX. And then okay. the, uh, I just wrapped, uh, American Horror Story. American Horror which was, Story, which that's was, right. Which was really cool. That's uh, cool. What was that like? It was fun. I mean, I got a chance to be on the American Horror Story lot and, um, you know, meet the whole cast and it's just really good fun. And, uh, what was your character on that show? I play this guy named Manuel, another bad guy. You see, it's, it's because... It's the tattoos, yeah. It's because of the tattoos, yeah. Maybe <laughs> the tattoos... My mom was right. She said, you'll never, you know... But <laughs> I was very young. Actually, it's helped you, though, probably. I mean, you get some of those roles because of the I tattoos. I think so, yeah. yeah. I was very young, though, when I got into acting, though. Uh, I was like, maybe... Well, for me, for my yeah. age now, but I was like 18 or 19 years old. Like, That's cool. I, I kind of just slid into it. That's awesome. Yeah. I, so tell us more about the role. So what did you have to do on that on that show? Um, well, we just wrapped. It's a, uh, I guess it's a menacing character, and there's some voodoo elements to the to this thing, you know. And uh, Santeria, like I guess like, I guess it's like Catholicism meets like witchcraft or something like that. You know? Santeria, I think it's something about your ancestors, the spirits of your ancestors are yeah. always around you, and mm -hmm. you like leave, um, you leave like something for them, I guess. Yeah. But anyways, I'm being told we have to take a break, so we'll be right back. I'm sorry. After these messages, and we'll continue talking. I really wanted to put a deck on my house. The floor was creaking, and there were cracks in the wall. I had them put in walls in my basement. Well, the whole thing was done on time, on budget, and not a day of work was missed. Alpha Structural is a top-rate company. I'd recommend them to anybody. If you live in a hillside home and gravity is pulling you towards the edge of the cliff, I recommend you call Alpha. It was a real pleasure to work with Alpha. Welcome back to the Red Booth Show. We're here with actor Jaime Savias. How's it going, Jaime? Good. I'm just pinch nervous, still acting He's up. Still got the pinch nerve. Okay. Well, we're but I'll be okay. We're almost to the end of the show here. Tomorrow's Sunday. I'm going to try to. You're going to chill. Do nothing. The, the, yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Well, I wanted to sort of segue from that. We were talking about that role in the Santeria sort of stuff, and then you said there's another movie that's coming out. That's yeah, this kind of movie's a coming out in, I believe, January. It's going to be released through Gravitas. What, um, oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, this one was a real, real, real treat for me because I got to act in it with my wife. That's awesome. Yeah, my wife's name is Leila Almas. We did a, um, we met doing theater here in LA like five years ago now. Oh, I love so love stories. She played my girlfriend on stage. That's talk about like you know you staying go. in character. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the name of the movie? The movie's called The Summoning. Okay. And we have a Facebook page, The Summoning Movie. Facebook.com slash The Summoning Movie. Nice. And it was a really, really good treat for me because I got to work with my wife on this movie. I think that's really cool. I have to say, yeah. like, I think when you have people, especially in this business, who are helping each other and supporting each other in what they're doing, it sort of makes a lot, it makes all the difference. You know, it seems to really help. Yeah, I, I, had, I had such a blast doing this, um, which is, you know, life imitating art because... My wife is actually from Sugarland, Texas, and that's where the movie takes place. 
And it's about So the, she's an Arabic from Sugarland, Texas. My wife has a Latina last name and she's Arabic and she's from Sugarland, Texas. Does yes. she have a Texan accent too? Not like really. Not that... really. But again, you know, Hollywood <laughs> types, you know, because she looks, I guess you could say, Caucasian. Okay. And they don't know what to do with they her. Because know. yeah, yeah. they think she's Latina or Mexican, you know, so she would probably be in a lot of TV commercials. Because that's yeah. what they're always looking she for. Does right? do, she there does you, do TV commercials. Yes, she does. <laughs> Shout out to Honda. Yeah. <laughs> um, so so when is your movie coming out? Yeah, you it said comes January? out January. We don't know the exact dates. I think uh it's gonna be released uh, nationwide. Cool. And in theaters? Uh we don't know what the what cities yet. Okay. Uh so we're still finding out, you know, that actually Funny enough, small world. We winded up getting cast in this movie, and it just was like a big family production because the director is a friend of mine, and then I remember the director, and so I think sometimes nepotism plays a huge role in working in Hollywood, and sometimes it goes against you. But when it works for you, it's a it's a great thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was a great opportunity. I got to work with Eric Roberts, so you know, side by side for a long time with him. And, and what was that like? He's just phenomenal. I think he's, a, you know, he just does everything. So I think I see why studio directors like to work with him and indie directors like to work with him. Um, he's a pro. He just makes the set a, a great time. And there's a Razad Dodi's in it who was in Amistad and uh, he played the villain in this movie that I always remember him in. Uh, Black Hawk Down. Oh, man. So he, he That's was, such a good movie. Yeah, and there's a lot of up-and-coming names in the movie, like just a lot of working actors and... Uh, Christian Luna is our head producer. He's won two Emmys working with Robert Rodriguez. Wow. On the show. Yeah, so it was really based off of this, um, this sugar factory where a lot of the slaves had worked in the factory in the early 1800s. And so we actually shot... But it's the, called The Summoning? So it's like summoning. a freaky story? It is a thriller. Okay. And I play a detective named Jonathan Silva who is basically trying to work with this girl who is a college student who's kind of discovered the the town secret. Okay, that sounds really interesting. And we sh yeah, and they say that the, where we shot in Richmond, Texas, this is a true story, I can't lie, okay, about this. Richmond Police Department, they say, is haunted. What? So when you enter the <laughs> like police- Like the building? The, the actual building. Oh. So when you enter, they warn you, literally warn you that the Richmond Police Department is haunted and do not go into the basement. I kid you not. This is like a, a town attraction. Do, 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 yeah. Do, do, do. And we shot there. and we In the basement. And we shot in the Imperial Sugar Factory where the story takes place. And no one has ever shot in the Imperial Sugar Factory that's been abandoned for 100 years except us. And I, from what I heard, our location scout was amazing. And I heard that because everyone was from Texas, they were so like honored to have us there. And from what I heard, they turned down tons of studio uh, movies to be shot there, and we were the only ones. Wow. And will be, because now they're turning them into a historic landmark and a hotel next door. That's cool. Yeah. Wow, so it sort of means a lot to that whole area. Yeah, so we're going to be going back probably in a couple of months to do some press over there. And man, it was so freaky shooting. I don't know if I believe in ghosts, but I definitely believe in I some believe sort in of... I believe in ghosts. I'd like to believe in ghosts. I'm sure there are ghosts. <laughs> but you definitely feel that energy when you're there and something... Yeah. You feel like something's around you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you're being summoned. <laughs> yeah. It goes with the name. Yes. By yeah. the way, before we have to leave, I wanted you to be to be sure we talk about another movie that I know you're in with it, with uh, Samara Films. Yeah, Samara Entertainment, uh, owned by Shari Flaherty. That's right. Thank you, Shari. Thank Hi. you, Shari. Big shout out. I'll pay you later. Um... <laughs> So Shari and I met through uh, some mutual friends and we've been discussing about working on a project together. And a good friend of mine from New York, his name's Mark Kubeli, he's actually one of the writers in the new Pablo Escobar movie coming out called El Patron with Catherine Zeta-Jones and John Leguizamo. And so I said, this kid's gonna be on fire, you know? I said, so we gotta work on something together. And we had been just kind of I it, mainly he was the, the the head writer on it. It was my idea. I said I think there, there's somewhere some good writer could, could tackle this, and so I met with Mark and I said Mark before you blow up and join the union and everyone's gonna be knocking down your door, uh, can we work on a project together? And I pitched him the idea, 
And Mark is a very interesting character because he's So this just, was your concept. It was my concept and he came with half the concept and we we're just like, let's just work something out. And he, I think, is a writer's writer, just a brilliant screenwriter. And we were at a, uh, a Pete's coffee shop and I was just telling him the idea and he kept saying like, you never know who's listening. And oh, he just, he's like that. Yeah. And he just kept, we was like this close to me when we were, yeah. I was pitching him the idea. And that's Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood. For you. <laughs> and three days later, he calls me and he says, Jaime, the script is done. And I said, okay, let's see what, you know, I didn't, I thought it would be like six months, right? Something yeah. like that. That's how long it takes me to write something, at least. Yeah. And so, um, me and my wife, we're, we live in uh, the, the valley. We live really close to here, actually. That's right. And, yeah. Go Valley. Uh, <laughs> I was a West Side guy, but then it just it didn't make sense anymore. Yeah. And so we're looking, we're trying to say, well, maybe we could find a new apartment. And I had seen that there's these apartments that they're renovating. And I went up to one of the workers in Spanish. I start talking to him and he says, oh, I'll introduce you to the owner. And I met the owner. His name's Nick Biasi, veteran, you know, movie financier, movie producer, just huge Hollywood movies. And he's he just, just happened to be that? He just happened to be the owner of this building. That's crazy. And I'm there in my like, you know, just, you know, workout clothes yeah. with, with a hat backwards. And my wife is there and we're literally just jogging and say, hey, well, maybe we could just talk to the guy. That is amazing. Yeah. And he's looking at us like we're crazy because they just, they didn't even put the, the for rent sign yet. Yeah. So we're just like, hey, we're looking for a new place. And he said, oh, I may be renting it out to a studio or you guys. And he says, what do you guys do? Long story short, I said, I'm an actor. But he said, I said, I also have a movie coming out with Gravitas. Yeah. And he said, maybe we can talk. And a few days later, we went out for lunch and, you know. That's how it's cut, done. Cut to Shari. You know, there's huge some huge names attached to the film now. It's called Guardian. Cool. Uh, we start shooting, I believe, in January now. In um, it's either January it's in, or December in mm -hmm. in Georgia. That's very cool. Congratulations. Thank you. That's so, amazing. What a great story, right? You guys come up a, with an idea, go out and find Hollywood somebody tale. who's gonna be yeah. like. You know, this was not my possible. doing. Just I don't the universe, just the law of that's, attraction. That's, I said. that's the that's how it seems to happen. I made so, I had no intention of even getting it done this it year. Happened. And Shari was just, you know, she played a big role in this and She it, makes a lot of things happen too, so that's really cool. She's like a muse. Yeah. <laughs> she I should just pay her to be my, my muse because it just seems to work out that way. So well, it's so exciting. You've got so many cool projects yeah. coming up. You've got the pilot. You've got a couple movies coming out. You're in TV yeah, shows that are yeah. great. And it's and really... I have to plug a play that I'm doing. Okay, well, we have to wrap it up. So let's let everybody know about it really quick and tell I'm them where they can play, find you. Uh, in November at the Sacred Fool Theater Company uh, called Blood Match. Uh, it's a, a production of the Urban Theater Movement, UTM. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Urban Theater Movement. Awesome. Okay, good. Well, you're a very, very uh, active thespian and, thank you. Uh, and writer. Thank you. So it's been an honor having you now on Now producer. Show. Now, I now guess, producer. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Congratulations. Thank you so much.